and the radiation is equivalent to a thousand Hiroshima bombs. And what happened was there was an earthquake which disturbed the reactors. They lost their external power supply. Each reactor needs a million gallons a minute of water to keep it cool. So the pumps stopped working. And underneath there are emergency pumps, but in came the tsunami and totally destroyed. And without cooling a million gallons a minute, every minute in those three reactors, it's so hot, E equals MC squared, right? The Einstein formula, that that malt, that uranium melts right into a molten mass called corium. And it melted its way through the reactor container right on, on the floor of the container. Now, as it did, there was a reaction, I won't go into it, but huge amounts of hydrogen were ex uh, produced, which caused explosions in units one, two, three, and four. We've never seen anything like it. The Japanese government didn't tell the people of Japan that there'd been three meltdowns for three months. And the meltdowns occurred in the first 24 hours. I just can't believe that a government would be so irresponsible. And they, and they told the people to flee, but they didn't tell them where, and the people fled right into the path of the fallout. Oh my God. Now, they were lucky, because the wind was blowing from east, west to east, across the Pacific, towards you, for the first <laughs> major part of the accident. So people in Vancouver and Seattle got a hell of a dose. The radiation went 40,000 times above normal in Seattle. <coughs> what about LA? You got some too, yeah. In the markets in LA, there was radioactive peaches and radioactive apricots and stuff, yeah. And in fact, the fallout fell all across America, even in Boston, where my family lives, my children, grandchildren. So, but you didn't get nearly as much as the Japanese people. Children are living in areas now in Japan which have been evacuated around Chernobyl because they're so radioactive. Little girls are twice as sensitive to, as little boys to radiation. We don't know why. They get cancer more readily. They have looked at over 3,000 children in Itati, which got a high fallout, and one third, a thousand, have thyroid nodules. Now that's early, because it's within a year we don't expect to see any cancer yet. And you know what the Japanese government is doing? It's following them. You don't follow children with thyroid nodules, you take it out and you look at it under the microscope and if they've got cancer, you remove their thyroid. So I can't tell you how medically irresponsible the Japanese government is and the ch many of the Japanese doctors and the Japanese, it's kind of a feudal society, you know how they all bow and apologise and the women just speak like this, very, but the women are starting to rise up because of their children and they're fleeing and getting angry but not enough of them and not enough of us so that's Fukushima I'll just say one other thing they collected uh, filters from car engines in Tokyo Tokyo and brought them back to the States to test them they were so radioactive they had to be buried in a radioactive waste dump now a car filter is like a human lung they inhale about as much air per day as does a car, as it does a lung. So extrapolate from the car filters to the lungs in, in Japan. And there's a wonderful man called Arnie Gunnison, who I have on my radio show quite frequently. And he was just in Tokyo and he collected some moss and some dirt from the ground and the building. Five samples. He brought them back and tested them. So radioactive, they had to go to a radioactive waste dump. Tokyo where 30 million people live, 200 miles or 150 miles from, from Fukushima. Tea grown south of Tokyo is very radioactive, tea. Half the rice in Japan is grown in Fukushima prefecture and it's coming in with cesium in it. So I th and, and they say from estimates that the accident in Fukushima is 2.5 to 3 times worse than Chernobyl.